Okay, hi there. We're so sorry for the delay. We had a technical issue and it wouldn't let us show our screen, but I think we're good. You should be able to see us now and we'll dive right in and get started. Thank you for your patience. I just want to welcome you today, uh, make a couple of brief announcements, and then we'll dive in. I know that many of you are listening in from far away and can't come to our local events or programs, and that's why we do this webinar series. We do host multiple webinars per month, so please visit our website to view our current schedule. You can go to our website at www.johnson-center.org and click on the webinars link that appears on the right-hand side. We do often add new webinars and events all the time, so if you're not on our email list, I would encourage you to visit our website and click on the Join Our Email List that appears on the home page. And to get instant news and events from the Johnson Center, do follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, as we do often announce grant and scholarship opportunities there for families, research opportunities, and special events and presentations. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the Johnson Center. There you're going to find a library of several of our past webinars covering a wide variety of topics. And for those of you who are local, be sure to check out our Back to School Bash coming up on Saturday, September 9th. This is a free family, family event that's good for our children, all children ages 4 to 10, and you can find more information on that on our Facebook page. Be sure to follow our colleagues at the Autism Research Institute as they host their own webinar initiative and share some great resources on their website and social media pages. If you're going to want a certificate of attendance after today's webinar, just look for a follow-up email that should appear in your mailbox one hour after the webinar concludes. It'll contain instructions on how to get your certificate. And if you have any questions today during the webinar, please type them into your GoToWebinar control panel and we'll get to them as time allows. So my name is Anissa Ryland and I'm going to be talking school lunches with you today. Some of us grew up with fond memories of the school cafeteria or the brown bag lunches that our parents sent with us or I actually had a Dukes of Hazard lunchbox. Um, but some of us, not so much. We don't have fond memories. So today we're going to talk a little bit about ways that you can make your life a little bit easier and your child's lunch a little more fun. And I thought this was a great uh, cartoon because we all start off kids and parents alike, back to school, fierce, ready to take on the world, and sometimes that can wane a little bit. So first of all, you're going to have to decide if you're going to go with a school lunch versus um, brown bag or home from lunch. And there are many factors that are going to influence your choice. That can be cost or nutrition, allergies, ease. If you have a child with food allergies or intolerances, I would encourage you to watch my colleague Gina Hill's webinar from last week, um, Navigating Food in the Schools. It's going to cover a lot of the information that those of you who have children with food allergies, food intolerances, or who are on a medically prescribed diet, how you can kind of navigate the school system, particularly if you're looking um, to get food at school. You can find that and several other past webinars on our YouTube channel, as I mentioned. Um, and I wanted to point out that you can also find several webinars there on picky eaters and feeding issues. Um, I'm not going to be talking much about that today. We don't have time. Our focus is going to be on tips on how to pack a healthy school lunch that your child will want to eat. But if your child only eats a few, few foods or has more serious eating issues, I would encourage you to check out the other webinars on our YouTube page to learn more about what you can do to address those issues. And I'm sorry I ran back here after our technical issues and now I'm a little out of breath. All right, so picky eating and school lunch, cafeteria, allergies aside, let's dive into back to school. And so we all want to pack the perfect lunch, um, and particularly at the beginning of the year, we want to start things off right and dive in. And there are certainly some beautiful options. You can find thousands upon thousands of pictures online of really creative, fun school lunches. Um, and, you know, you can kind of go crazy looking through all of them. I really like the ghost on this one. Um, for those who love Hello Kitty, you can really find, I mean, you can go down a rabbit hole. I spent hours looking at these adorable pictures. But I'm not that creative or talented. Um, and I don't certainly don't have the time to develop those skills quite yet. Um, and so I'm not going to focus on how to become a, a lunch artist because there are certainly those out there who can and more power to you and please come visit my house whenever you want. But that's not what I'm going to focus on today because that's taking it to a whole other level. We're really going to talk about how you can quickly, meaningfully create a great school lunch for your child. So before we get started, you really want to first kind of take inventory and think about a few things. 
First of all, you want to think about school restrictions. And what I mean by that is what are the rules for your school in terms of what you can bring to lunch? I know there are some schools that are nut free due to allergies. Um, some schools request that you only send compostable lunch bags because maybe they eat outside and don't have the um, manpower to carry things back and forth. Whatever those are, make sure you're aware of any restrictions or rules that your school may have. Next up, you want to think about it that students have access to refrigerators or microwaves if needed. Some students do, some don't, and that can influence what you're able to send or how you pack and prepare it. Think about time constraints. How much time does your student have for lunch? What can they reason reasonably eat in that time frame? If they don't have a lot of time, then sending something that requires them to assemble it or that may take longer to eat may not be feasible. So just think about what their uh, lunch period looks like, how much time they have to eat when you think about what you might send. What is your child's skill level? And by that I mean, you know, can they open a applesauce container unassisted? Can they screw uh, the lid off the thermos or open their own water bottle? Can they open the Ziploc bag? You want to recognize those things because not everyone has an adult right at hand at lunchtime who can help with those things. So think about what your child's skill levels are and think about what you might want to teach them. Um, that could be a goal and something you can teach them both at home and at school, um, but think about that when you're packing. And then peer influence. You really don't want to underestimate the desire to try foods that their peers are eating. So if you can, spend some time investigating, whether that's um, asking other parents or other kids you know who are around the same age as your child, or even visiting the school lunchroom and observing what are the other kids eating, because chances are your child's going to want that or something like it as well. So once you've kind of taken stock and you know the parameters and the rules and what you're going to do, you want to start by gathering your materials. Some people love to start the new school year off with a new lunchbox. Some reuse the one from last year. But you want to think about what you have at your disposal to send lunch to school with your kids. So first up is the lunchbox, of course. Whether you want to go old school or a lunch sack or a plastic bento box or a stainless steel bento box or just a plain old paper bag, get your lunchbox and your related accessories ready to go. If you're using a box that has accessories like a thermos that fits in the box or utensils that fit in a particular space or containers that are made specifically for your box, consider having a backup for when they either don't make it home, as they inevitably won't at some point, or you just don't have time to wash them every day. It's always good to have that ready to go, particularly if it's a specific size that not just anything will do. Then you want to think about other supplies. A water bottle, really important. There's a whole webinar on our YouTube page about hydration, and it's really important for your kids to have a water bottle at their disposal. Clearly, there's a lot we could talk about in terms of materials and what's best and what's not. You can do some investigation on that, um, but make sure your child has a good water bottle that they take with them every day. You might want to think about a thermos, particularly if you're sending leftovers that you want to keep heated if they don't have access to a microwave. Containers for leftovers that would fit in the lunchbox. Ice packs for days when you're sending something that needs to stay chilled. Any little dips or condiment containers that you could send, whether that's for ketchup or hummus or guacamole. And a reusable sandwich or snack bag. You can use Ziplocs or you can go with a reusable one that can be washed out and reused. So we've gone through our supply checklist and we have everything on hand that we think we're going to need for the year. We're armed with our supplies, so now what? What, what should we do next? Well, let's think about the plan you're going to make to send school lunches. You want to involve your little chef. There's lots of things kids can help with, and it's a good idea not just because ultimately it will teach them and reduce your workload, but also because if a child is involved in preparing it, they're far more likely to eat it. So to whatever skill level they have, to whatever is appropriate for their age, get them involved in planning their lunches. The more you can do it, the more likely they are to eat what you send. They can be involved in the planning, the shopping, the preparation of the lunches, and there are tons of great ideas online and fun ways to get your child involved. And we'll look at a couple of those in a minute. But before you do start in the kid kitchen, I do want you to consider a couple of points. First of all, remember that kids have shorter attention spans, so you want to give them quick and easy jobs. Keep any instructions simple and give them one at a time if you can. Some maybe appropriate kitchen jobs for younger kids might be rinsing the fruits and vegetables, pouring out ingredients that you've pre-measured, putting things in the bags or containers, stirring anything you're making. You should be prepared to repeat your directions as they can get excited or distracted and forget some of the steps. And you should plan for and expect messes in the beginning. 
and let the kids help with cleanup. That's another job they can do. You want to give lots of positive feedback on their cooking efforts and encourage them to continue. And just remember that young cooks need a lot of supervision. You're in the kitchen with utensils and appliances, so you don't want to leave them alone. But what are some tools you can use to help your kids get involved with the meal planning or preparation of their lunches? There's lots of great printables you can find online. You just Google uh, a school lunch children's checklist and you can find all kinds of things. I found some great ones. This one was from realmomnutrition.com, a little list that you can sit down and write out together and they can help pack it. Or here was another one from Coffee Cups and Crayons, a little, you know, here's your checklist. You want a main dish or sometimes they say protein. You want a couple of fruits and veggies, maybe a side and a drink and a list you could sit down together and brainstorm. What are some of the things that could go into that list? Make your own handout and then each week they can sit down with those and help plan their lunches. Here's another great one that I found on whilehewasnapping.com. It's a similar idea, listing out your main course, your fruits, your veggies, your snacks, and you can customize this to whatever your children's preferences, allergies, or abilities to have these things might be and it can be a little prompt. If your child is younger and isn't reading, you could do a picture schedule or little uh, pictures that they could help. So pictures of what the proteins are, pictures of the fruit, and they can assemble them. And that could be a fun way to start to get ready to go back to school is to talk about what kind of things they could take for their lunches. Once you've done that, you really want to just think about planning ahead. That really is the key to making it simple and less stressful. You want to make your lunch menus maybe a week at a time. If you can, get a copy of the school cafeteria lunch uh, menu and see if maybe you want to correlate with that. If they're serving pasta, if you want to send a pasta, or if they're sending hamburgers one day and you want to send hamburgers. And that way your kids don't feel like they're missing out if that's something that they're concerned about. Plus, planning ahead a week at a time will allow you to shop for supplies and be prepared. So, you know, you want to include your fruits, your veggies, your sandwiches, leftovers, be sure and consider using leftovers from previous day's meals. It's always a nice way to repurpose and stretch out your food budget. If your child, again, does have a school with a cafeteria, get that menu and see if you can make that similar meal plan to help them feeling like they're missing something. That might even help add a few new foods to your child's repertoire they wouldn't have thought about or you wouldn't have thought about before. You can cut up veggies and prepack snacks like crackers or dried fruit on the weekend before so that you can grab and go throughout the week. And we'll talk about some of these a little more as we go on. But there are lots of fun tricks and tips to be learned online. And let's just talk about a couple of them. Um, but we want you to consider a few. These are kind of the few quick um, down and dirty things you can do really to be prepared and make this go more simply. You can consider freezing drinks, whether that's water bottles, juice boxes. Um, freeze those the night before, and that can double as an ice pack in the lunch container. You can make a snack station shelf in your pantry or in a cabinet that your kids can choose from. So whatever their you know, snacks are that they are going to grab throughout the week, have an assortment, and then you can just say, go grab two snacks for the day, and you know they can grab something appropriate. You can make up a batch of food on Sundays, and this is something I try to do a lot. It really makes the week go easier. You can make a bunch of hard-boiled eggs. You can cut up veggies or even fruit. Uh, you can make uh, PB&J sandwiches and freeze them, um, and they usually defrost really nicely. You can make uh, chicken or steak and cut them into bite sizes that make a nice grab-and-go meal, uh, roasted broccoli or other vegetables. So think about what you can make ahead on Sunday, put in the fridge that would be easy to grab during the week. You can use little silicone cupcake cups in your lunch boxes to separate foods. And this is good, especially if you have a child that really doesn't like their foods mixing up. Also think about creating a home for your lunch box so that every day your child comes in and empties it, your child or you wash it, and it goes in the same place so you always know where it is and you avoid that scramble in the morning of, where's the lunch box? That's happened just a couple of times in my house. This is one of my favorite tricks that I learned, and I learned this courtesy of the lunch ladies at my daughter's middle school. She would always come home and rave about how much she loved the apples in the school cafeteria. And I kept thinking, they're apples. How are they different from our apples at home? An apple is an apple. Is it a certain type of apple? So finally one day I went in, and I asked the school lunch lady, what, are you, what kind of apples are you using? What are you doing that this child is so in love with them? And she said that their trick was that they would soak the apple slices in pineapple juice because not only did that make them taste better, but it kept them from browning. Now if you Google online, you can find lots of tips and tricks to keep fr cut fruit fresh. There's products you can buy. Some people swear by lime juice or baking soda, but I will tell you that pineapple juice soaked apple slices taste phenomenal and will last 
wonderfully, even after you take them out of the juice. So we'll buy a pineapple on Sunday, cut it up, put the juice in a container, cut up a bunch of apples and throw it in there, and then during the week pull slices out and throw them in a lunchbox, and they stay fresh and crisp, and they don't brown, and they're quite delicious. I just thought this was an interesting little fact I found in my research that you should always slice sandwiches diagonally. And I'm not going to go through the science of why, but Nathan Pyle over at BuzzFeed has assembled seven reasons he feels are scientifically valid for why you should always cut your sandwiches diagonally. So if you want to know the whys, you can look that up. So we've talked about some of the tips and tricks that you can follow, and if you have any that you want to share with us, please feel free to, to use your go to webinar control panel there to share some, and I'm happy to pass them along. But I also want to talk about some of the fun things you can do that can help your child um, help make the lunch and make it a little more fun. So we're going to have a little bit of fun with it now and talk about what are some of the easy and fun things you can do. Cookie cutters are phenomenal, and especially if your child has a particular theme of things they love. They love ninjas, they love trains, they love airplanes. Buy a couple of cookie cutters in that shape. You can use them to cut sandwiches, you can use them to cut fruit or veggies into fun shapes. Um, cheese slices, uh, sandwich meat slices, and you'll see some pictures of some of those things coming up here in just a minute. But cookie cutters are a great way to kind of up your Pinterest level there a little bit. Um, and make things a little prettier or a little more fun um, when you're cutting things up for lunches. Uh, if your child has come home from the lunch and wants those yellow box lunchable uh, or, uh, type things, you can get them or you can also make your own. Um, whether you want to just to save money or to create a healthier version or an allergen free version if you have a child with allergies. You can certainly make your own. There's lots of containers that are bento box style or segmented containers and you can get creative with what you fill into those little boxes. Crackers, cheese, uh, lunch meats, fruits, veggies, you can really, and even a treat. Um, you can make your own and assemble those so that your child kind of has that experience of assembling their own lunch because that's always a lot of fun. Another great idea is breakfast for lunch and breakfast for dinner and breakfast for breakfast. I'm partial to breakfast foods. But you can certainly use breakfast for lunch and send it in the lunch box. And this is where those little bento style boxes really come in handy. You can serve quiche or hard boiled eggs, bacon, sausage, toast, fruits, um, breakfast sandwiches, parfaits. Even if your child has a dairy allergy, if they can have coconut or almond or cashew yogurt, you can make a little parfait with granola. Um, waffles, pancakes, um, trail mixes, apple sauces. There's all kinds of things you can really do to have fun with sending breakfast for lunch. And I know in the school cafeterias, it's always a very popular day when the kids have breakfast tacos or pancakes for lunch. Um, and these are some of the ideas I found on 100 Days of Real Food. And you can find lots of other resources for that if you Google it online. Another fun idea is a sandwich on a stick. If you have a kid that doesn't like sandwiches or gets tired of sandwiches, you can certainly get creative if they're old enough to safely have a skewer. And you can buy um, larger skewers or plastic skewers that don't have pointy ends if you're concerned. Um, and so you can make little skewers that they can take their sandwich or, or make little kebabs that you can do savory or sweet with fruit. Um, you know, PB&J and fruit's a great one, or any kinds of mix of meats, cheese, veggies. Um, you can even go Mediterranean with pita or cucumber and, and things like that. So you can get have fun with the skewers and send them with little dipping sauces, and the kids really, really like those. And I found this photo on two peas in their pod, but again, tons of resources if you skewer, skewer, lunchboxes, if you Google skewers and lunchboxes. As I mentioned before, use your leftovers. Um, you can either use them just as they were and just send them, or you can repurpose them into another form, whether that's you roasted a chicken and then you want to slice up the chicken and make a chicken salad, or um, a chicken sandwich, or you want to send it just as it is. But be sure you're using your leftovers. If your child has access to a microwave and they need it, that's great. If they don't, thermoses keep things warm, or you can have ice packs to keep things chill. So those are certainly ways to send things that they're ready to go and your child um, can enjoy those at lunch as well. And that way it kind of helps you from getting in a rut of the same old sandwiches, fruits, and chips every day. Another fun thing to do, and this might be a good idea before school starts to sit down and do some brainstorming of some potential, but you can do themes. And what I mean by that is pick a theme week. Say so this week we're going to have Star Wars lunches. 
and you can really get creative with your themes. Um, we actually had a Star Wars birthday party for one of my kids, so a lot of this food comes from that idea. But, you know, you could serve all kinds of fun things in their lunch uh, that go along with that theme. You could serve Yoda Mole with Trooper Scoopers, just some guacamole and chips. You could serve Wookiee cookies. You could make oatmeal cookies and turn them into Wookiees. You could serve boba fruit, which is just a fruit salad. Uh, you could do clone cakes, and for this you could do anything from corn cakes, salmon cakes, tuna cakes, um, any kind of, of food you can make into a cake. Of course, you got to have lightsabers. You could also do uh, pretzel sticks as lightsabers, too. Uh, Hans burgers or princess lays. And there's some other ideas here, too. You can do hot dogs if you eat those, and there's salmon dogs and veggie dogs and all kinds of dogs, but you could do Jabba the Hutt dogs. You could do uh, pizza with a Star Wars theme, Jedi juice, or Wookiee water. And the thing is, with these things, a little bit goes a long way. It's not like you have to go full on Pinterest and everything in the lunchbox has to be themed. One or two things in their lunch each day really makes it go a long way. The kids love it, their friends love it, and they're far more enthusiastic about eating. So you don't have to really go all out. Come up with three or four or five things, one each day, that you could do. Um, and it makes it a lot f more fun. Another theme you could look at are lunches from around the world. And this is a fun thing to talk about with your kids too. And you can find a lot of resources on this. But look at what kids eat around the world in their lunches. And there are some beautiful pictures um, and descriptions online. If you look at BuzzFeed or Huffington Post, Food Network, there are several sites that have beautiful images of what a lunch tray or a lunch box looks like around the world and this might give your kids some inspiration to try some new foods so you know you can talk about it the week before this year we're gonna look at what kids in Japan eat and maybe pick three or four things that they think are interesting they're willing to try to go on their lunch and it kinda can introduce them to more international cuisine and give you a way to kinda keep things fresh and again if they're involved and you're going to the store you're gonna find some new things that they can eat and again these are all kid friendly because kids from around the world eat them so here's just one example of a picture um, from what the kids eat from around the world. This was in Finland. Um, and so, you know, you could talk to your kid, oh, let's look, they have some sort of crepe. I don't know a child alive that doesn't like crepes, but maybe that's something you could introduce in, or a certain kind of bread or rolls, or, you know, carrot season with a certain seasoning. But really just, it's a way to talk about other foods, it's a way to talk about what other kids eat, and a way to kind of spice things up. So you can really get creative with themes from movies to TV shows and cartoons to what other kids are eating around the world. Um, and really that's where Google and Pinterest and all those are your friend. You can find some really amazing options for ways to kind of just freshen it up a little bit. Another nice thing, and this is not food related, but I don't know a kid out there who doesn't like it from little ones to big ones, is to send a little note in their lunch. And this is something you can prepare ahead so you don't have to think about it. For older kids, there's a lot of great printables or war notes you can buy that you can send quotes or little inspirational, inspirational sayings. For younger kids, there's all kinds of things. Um, and really, again, there are tons of free printables online that you can download now, print, cut them out, and have them ready to go. There's some great jokes. There's a, a great little inspirational silly things. There are literally thousands of these online. So go ahead and before school starts, print a bunch out, cut them up, and you're ready to throw them in. Because I don't know anybody that doesn't like to get a little joke or a little bit of love in the middle of their day. And I know I kind of shake mine up with my kids between jokes and quotes and just little sayings. Sometimes I'll personalize one if something's happened. You know, I really like how hard you studied or I really liked you know you gave your all or I really liked how nice you were to your friend yesterday so it's a way to another way to show them you're paying attention and to show them that you're thinking about them even when you're not there so a lot of times kids will be at lunch and it's nice just to know your parents thought about you earlier um, and it's a great little way to use um, that line of communication with your kids although I really did like this one I found um, I think it was in the Daily Times uh, this dad's version of his little love note um, I have been known to send notes with my kids, not that threatens unicorn death, but, but will say, you know, I want you to eat your sandwich first, then you can have your fruit. If they start to get in patterns where they're not eating certain things or I notice a lot of things coming home, use that as another way to just send a little nudge, hey, I'm still there, I'm still watching, I want to make sure you're eating a healthy lunch. And that goes back to, two, talking to your kids in age-appropriate ways. 
that they can understand why you're sending what you're sending. You know, talk about how protein is really important to keep them feeling full in the afternoon when they might get a little tired after school all day. So if they can eat their protein at lunch, it's going to give them some energy to push through the rest of the day. And that eating their fruits and vegetables is going to give them the nutrition they need after they've played hard on the playground to really re uh, replenish those stores and be active after school. So give them the reasons why you're sending the food you're sending so that you can start to teach them to take responsibility for their own in whatever understandable, age-appropriate, skill level appropriate way you can. Um, it's good just to talk to them about it so they know. Another thing to think about that isn't food related at lunch, but it's important to remember that lunch is a really important social time for kids. And for any kids who find that challenging, whether that's because they're on the autism spectrum or have a developmental disorder or they're just really anxious or really shy, for whatever reason, it's good to remember that is a social time and think about ways you might be able to make that easier for them. And that can go all the way from kids who have a one-on-one -on -one aid, really talking to that aid about what lunch looks like and what they're doing to make sure that their child is getting some social interaction at lunch or getting some um, time with their peers or if they need time alone, whatever your child's need is, um, talk to their aid or teacher. But if your child's wanting to talk to people and is just struggling, maybe send some things along that could help. Now, some of that is making sure they have food that you know, they feel like doesn't make them stand out, as we've talked about, but it also goes to thinking about what can they talk about. So if you have a social skills program or you're just talking with your child about, you know, what do people talk about at lunch? Are they talking about what they're going to do in the playground or what they did on the playground? Are they talking about classes? And you might consider sending some little games that might attach to their lunchbox or backpack that might be a, a kind of an icebreaker. So when my son was in elementary school and really wanted to engage but didn't know what to say, we'd send little trivia games that he could say, hey, does anybody know the answer to this? And it would kind of get the kids talking and get them laughing and engaged and it helped kind of break that ice so that lunchtime became a more enjoyable experience. And incidentally along with that, his anxiety went down so he was eating more. So it really does play up both developing those social skills and making those relationships and friendships and connections, but it also can help them eat more if they're not sad or feeling lonely or they're um, worried about whether or not they're doing the right thing, they're more likely to eat all the beautiful food that you prepared for them and they helped prepare and send it along. So that's another thing to think about. Um, I mentioned earlier our, our back to school bash and one of the things we do there is usually have some sort of snack bar that um, Kids can look at to think about what they're going to eat at school or talk about healthy food. So find events and things that can help your kid think about lunchtime, snack time, good food, fun food. Um, there's always fun ways we have. Uh, it's already passed this year, but every summer we do a junior chef event where we teach kids how to make fun sandwiches or fun snacks out of healthy things. So make it a game when you have time so that when the crunch comes along and it's school year and you're rushing around, it's already been done. You've already talked about it. You have the supplies on hand and you know what to do. So I want to thank you. Um, I don't think, I think I covered the questions. Oops, sorry about that. Um, that we had hopefully, um, I think I answered most of your questions, um, but if you have any more, please feel free to send us an email at info at johnson-center.org. If you have any ideas um, that you want us to share, we do have a blog. We do send things out on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, so if you have some great resources that you love that you want us to pass along, please feel free to email those and send them, and we'll certainly share those because I know you can really get overwhelmed when you start looking at all the things that are out there, but you can also get a lot of inspiration too, and not necessarily the complicated ones, but really looking at um, you know specific needs for your child. So if your child is grain-free, there's tons of great paleo lunch sites. If your child is gluten-free, there's tons of great gluten-free lunch sites. If you're a vegetarian, you know, Google vegetarian. Lunch, but I, I started to include those, but there's so many that I really think looking at um, those things, and again, talking to your child, making sure that they know 
what to eat even when my son was younger before he could read in his bento box I would number the boxes and just say one through five these are the orders you eat them in and that way I was sure he was eating his protein first now that doesn't mean he was 100% compliant and we even got to a point where I said if you come home and you've eaten numbers one through three the next day you'll have a treat in your lunchbox so it might take getting a little creative to make sure they're following that number scheme but depending on your child's needs there are lots of resources out there if you can't find them please email and let me know. I'm happy to help you look in the right direction um, to find some great resources to make sure that your kid's enjoying lunch, they're getting what they need, but you feel confident that you're not A, you know, killing yourself to do it, and B, that you're doing what they need and giving them what they need. So we're happy to provide resources if you want to shoot us an email. I want to make sure you know our next webinar is coming up one week from today. It's on toilet training. Yes, you can. And remember to visit us on that YouTube channel to view our past webinars. There's lots of great um, webinars on there for, about picky eaters, about nutrition, about uh, nutrition for sleep, which is really important during the school year. So check that out and let us know what other topics you'd like to see because um, we're always adding new things based on feedback from you. So thank you very much for joining us today, and I look forward to seeing your questions. And you should get that email one hour from now if you would like a certificate of attendance. Thank you so much.